All right, in uh, this tutorial, we're going to go through, we're going to UV unwrap our arch. So in the, in the background here, you can see I have my arch model. Uh, I also have two explore windows, right? That's, that's what we call the little yellow folder down here. Sorry, a uh, file explorer. I have two file explorer windows open. So uh, you'll see that I've made folders for the UV lock, and then I have a separate folder for my arch. Um, if you right click, you can always go in here and say view large icons. It shows you the icons. The ones for 3ds Max have a little 3ds Max logo in the corner. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to select. Let's right click and say sort by type. And now I'm just going to select the brick trim. I'm going to right click and copy them. And then over here in the arch folder, I'm going to right click and paste. All right, because I'm going to I'm going to use this brick and trim texture. I'm going to use them for my arch model as well. And so I have my most recent version of my arch is open. Let's close this uh, folder, and I'm just going to click here. And I'm going to right click and copy the path, the location of where my arch is. All right, so let's do rendering, material editor, slate material editor. And now I'm just going to bring over a new multi sub object. I'm going to bring over two standard legacy materials. All right, if you're not seeing standard legacy materials, then you don't have the renderer set up properly and you'll need to go into rendering, render setup, and just make sure scanline renderer is set. All right, my arch is selected. You can see over there it says VN arch. I'm gonna double, I'm gonna click on my multi-sub, do set number to two. Oops, all right, make sure numlock is on my keypad. All right, set number of materials to two, click OK. And then let's click on this first material. I'm going to call this A underscore brick. The second one I'm going to call B underscore trim. And then let's go ahead and where's that? There's that folder. I'm just going to drag in these textures. You can only drag them in one at a time. At least it's been like that for a couple of years now in 3ds Max. Uh, so if you try and drag in multiples and it doesn't work, that's why. So I drag them in and I plug them in and actually I minimize these. Sorry, I, I should keep them larger for you. Uh, I'm going to right click on my multi-sub and say layout children so it kind of organizes them. Let's move our arch out of the way. Okay, there you go. So I, I plugged my textures into diffuse color. That's the color that we always use. And you can always make this smaller to make it a little bit more manageable for you. And then you can always organize by saying layout children. All right, let's select the actual multi-sub object. Let's have our arch selected. We're going to right click and say assign material to selection. And then we're just going to close this. All right, so here's our arch. Our arch has some level base UVs. So I, I haven't really done the research on it yet. Uh, there's some shortcut or some setting that will kind of highlight your entire model sort of blue like this when you click on it. So if that's not happening to you, or don't don't worry about it. That, that's okay. We know that when our model is selected, it's highlighted. All the UV edges show up white like this, which is what we want. All right, and I have a name. I've named my model VN underscore Arch. So let's let's do this. What we're gonna do to start with is let's just take a look at what's already on here. So I'm gonna put an unwrap UVW. And I'm gonna click Open UV Editor, and then I'm just gonna scroll down and do Pack. Custom. I'm just going to pack everything in. All right. So we see that our, our UVs are pretty chaotic. And that's because when you build a 3D model, the UVs are generated on the fly. When you first make something, like if you jump in here and make a sphere, it does auto generate UV mapping coordinates. But as soon as you go into that object, and really any object, and start grabbing polygons, and start doing things like extrude, right? And start moving them around. Those UVs are no longer, right? The UVs up on the part that existed before are still there, but it, it doesn't really know what to do with the new area yet. And that's where UV unwrapping comes in. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's uh, maximize this viewport. And so just to begin with, let's 
We don't really need that unwrap. I'm just going to do convert to edit poly. And what I'm going to do instead is put a UVW map on. And so the, the reason I'm actually properly starting this with UVW map is this is going to get us a clean, basic set of UVs that we can go in and then tweak and adjust. So I'm just going to set it to box. And then I'm going to square off the values. Now, I know that my grid, I built this on a, a one meter grid and it takes up four of them, so it's 400 units. So let's just set the length, the width, and the height to 400 units. And then I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to go into the gizmo, right? That's the sub object of UVW map. And while I'm in move, I'm going to set my values to X and Y zero, and then I want Z at 200. I'm going to right click and say convert to edit poly. And so the reason I did that is because working in games, actually, I want to undo that. The reason I set my gizmo to those specific dimensions of four meters squared, and I adjust its position so it's centered on the model there is, as I go through and build objects in my 3D world for my game, if I kind of set my textures to a basic UV tiling set, it'll keep them sort of consistently across them, at least as a, a baseline. So let's go in here, and I'm actually going to change my UV tile here to 2. And I'm using tab to jump between U and V. And now I'm going to right click and say convert to edit poly. So now that, that's actually looking a little bit more interesting. Granted, it needs a lot more work, but you're, you're getting some of the general idea. So we don't all want all this to just be brick. And so I'm going to go into element, and I'm going to go over here to select object. And I'm going to select some things like this top part. And actually, I need to grab everything first. And under Polygon Material IDs, if you find that rollout, I'm going to set ID to 1. And now I can go through and start setting some of these other elements to ID 2. And just be careful you're changing Set ID and not Select ID. Select ID is just a selection option. Right? Set ID is the one that's going to be uh, where you actually set things. And we could actually, instead of going through and individually clicking and signing, we could probably just click on the main body here. I'm going to hold control and click on the two feet that it has and then do edit, select invert. And I'm going to set all those to ID2. There we go. So now we see we got some visual breakup on it and we see that we do have UV work that we need to do on the model. So let's, oh, I right clicked and I said convert to edit poly to bake that in as like a basic set of UVs. And we can you know what? I put an unwrap on, but I don't want to do that. Here's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to double check to make sure that my model is zeroed out in the world. And so in case you haven't done it before, I'm going to copy the name of my model. I'm going to go to box, keyboard entry. I'm going to make a 100 by 100. Right? On length, width, and height, I'm setting a value of 100, hit and create. I'm making a box. I'm going to call this box bn arch and then i'm going to convert to edit poly i'm going to click attach i'm going to attach my model to it and i'm going to go here to element click on the box and delete it so a couple things that does that makes sure that my bot my arch its axis is on x y and z so when i use symmetry it's going to behave the way i expect it to also that gets rid of any scales that were on the model which could cause really odd results that you would not expect when you go to unwrap UVW because unwrap UVW will 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 def, will uh, deform itself based on the original scale and so that could really throw things off. And so getting doing that box like that is a good way to kind of clean that up. An alternative method is you go to utilities and if it's not right here as an option already, what you're looking for is reset X form. You can click more to go through and find it you could uh, also there's a way to manage these to get them to show up but basically if you go into reset x form and click reset selected what that does is it removes any weird uh, scales you have on your model and then you could just say collapse to and that makes that permanent in there so, all right uh, here's what we're going to do in order to make our lives easier i'm going to switch to the top view here and i'm just going to zoom out and i'm going to select let's go to wireframe here 
I'm gonna select all these polygons on the top and hit delete. And I'm gonna select all these polygons over on the left and hit delete. And since we do have all this symmetry on our model, let's change this to perspective, orbit around, F3 to go to shade it. Our model's symmetrical. If we just go through and UV unwrap this, we're gonna be perfectly fine. And so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, it's just gonna save us time. And so one thing I'm seeing here when I look at this, I see that there's some polygons on the top of the arch that we're not we don't really need so let's just double check to make sure we're getting rid of the right stuff go to display and turn on back face call all right so i see this row of three polygons i'm going to delete those you're never going to see them this one big polygon you're actually going to see that because that one you see how it pops out over the ledge but this one right here on the bottom of this main column part you're not going to see that so let's delete that this little base over here on um, this piece you're not going to see so we'll delete that and so we're getting rid of polygons that we don't ne we're not going to see and so getting rid of them just makes this process go a little bit smoother and easier all right so let's go in here now honestly the base looks pretty good with those toggling frequencies you, there's some stuff you could do or if you're going to unwrap uvw open the uv editor there's some things you could do where if you wanted to grab the vertex points on just this base portion. And what I do is I kind of have my edit UV over here in the corner and I have the model visible here. I'm just going to grab these UVs and slide them down a little bit. Just because I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to get the ambient line here to kind of sit right at the base. So it looks like, hey, this stone block comes up and then it stops. And then you could conceivably do the same thing up here, where if you grab these vertex points and then maybe drag those down. Although, you know what? That looks really dumb. <laughs> I don't like that. Let's just undo that. But I, I do like moving this line. I think that's good. And I think the rest of it is just fine as it is like we don't need to tune any of and when i say that I, i'm really just focusing in on the main primary brick so let's go here to all ids and we're just going to switch to trim and we're going to focus in on the trim elements of our model first so let's hit the, the roughest the most difficult part of this first i'm going to go into element right and so i'm in unwrap uvw i'm going to go to polygon and this checkbox here is select by element. I'm just going to click on this portion, right? And so this is the, this is this arched portion here. And I'm going to do a projection mapping on it. And I'm going to change the alignment. I think the Y, there you go. What I'm trying to do is just get it projected here from the front. Let's turn that off. And I'm going to use this guy. This is display only selected polygons. All right, here's the plan. Uh, we're going to unfold this. So I'm going to go and turn off select by element. I'm going to go and here under peel, there's this guy, point to point seams. I'm going to click at this top point and come down to the bottom and then right click to get out of there. If that doesn't work, that button can be a little bit tricky. It doesn't always work. You could go into edge and try to click on one of these edges. If the entire thing is being selected when you do that, that means select by element is on, so just make sure you turn that off. But if I grab one edge and grab the entire loop, I can come over to peel, and the third option here is convert edge selection to seams. If I click on that, now I can go in, and if I go back into polygon, I click on one polygon and use this last button, expand polygon selection, to expand it out, and now I can just unfold the whole thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna unfold it like that, see how it kind of peels it out and then let's do tools relax start relax and then let's just kind of rotate it and it all depends on how fancy you want to get uh, you can go into edge and double click on an edge there we go and then i'm just going to do a line horizontally and so i'm just going to go through double click on each ledge and do that you can see it kind of starts to overlap on its, itself and you're like oh no it's starting to get scary but as long as you're, you're just kind of looking for these edges and lining them up, uh, they, 
can be kind of tricky to click on. You could always click on one and then just do select loop and then come up to that align. That works too. That may be easier. There we go. All right, so I kind of lined all those up and now let's just grab all these polygons. Oops, polygons. And then right click, go to move. And now we'll just kind of move this to where we want it. And there's all sorts of ways we can handle this. If I scale this up, you want to make sure you're, you're looking at the front, really. I can scale this so that uh, if you want to know which portions you're looking at, you can kind of get it to an angle. And just grab one of these polygons. And so maybe I take this polygon. And so I kind of look at that row. I'm going to right click, go to move. I just move that row so it's kind of sitting on that element. And maybe I'll scale it up even more and then move it down. There we go. So that looks kind of cool and neat. Uh, I do see some distortion happening there, and we'll fix that in a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as I orbit around, I, I think all the other detail that's just continuing around just makes it look even cooler. So let's just go into Edge, and just like we did before, but uh, I'm going to click one edge and grab that loop. We're just going to do this vertically now. Loop. And line that up. And uh, don't be nervous that you have an entire arch to unwrap because most of it is not going to be this tedious. All right. this loop. All right. And so we're, we have all this really cool textural detail in this trim texture, and we're just bringing it into our model is all we're doing here. All right. See? That wasn't so bad. And now if we want, we could even go through and in polygon mode. One thing that's great is once you have it aligned where you want, you could switch to move horizontally only. And so if you wanted to kind of shift it a little bit so that the circle part wasn't getting cut off, you certainly could. You just got to keep in mind you have this one circle at the top. So maybe if you want to move it over. And you could even... To a certain extent, you could even go into like freeform here. Just grab this edge, pull it over either way if you wanted to kind of fine tune it some. All right. So that, that's kind of the process. And you see there is a little bit of distortion happening on this. But because it's so detailed, I, I don't really think it's that bad. It doesn't bug me. Let's turn off display only selected. Because if you remember, we got an entire mesh here. Oops. Let's make sure that's turned on. All right, so we're on trim. Let's just go to brick, and then we'll go back to trim. Uh, the next step is let's look at start looking at our different column elements. I'm going to go into, oops, I'm stay in polygon here, and an element. I'm just going to click on a couple of these, and I'm just going to rotate them 90 degrees, and then just kind of, oops. I'm going to try and grab the handle. I'm just going to move them all. Oh. Even though the handle's visible, I am constraining. So let's move to another one and kind of move it down. So it all depends on how much detail you want on there. If you want to, let's just grab all of them. I'm going to turn on to isolate it. And then I can just kind of move all these up. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of stack them on themselves. Because they're so tiny, I really don't want spend too much time on them. Let's actually turn on select my element. I'm using Alt to deselect. And I just kind of want to stack them all on top of themselves in this space. And then I'm going to actually just, oh, come on, man, select for me. There we go. I'm going to grab all them and just put them on this generic kind of concrete looking portion here. There we go. And maybe I'll even scale them so that they're not clipping that edge at all. And there we go. We can turn that off. All right, so this is this is looking pretty cool. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. We're kind of starting to get... Ah, uh, you know what? I think I can finish it off. All right, so let's grab the top polygon. Oops, turn off select my element. Let's grab the top polygon. Hold control and click on this bottom one. This is for the main body here. We're just going to break them. And then I'm going to hit... Oops, I don't want to do that. And move them over and stack them on top of themselves like all those other ones we were doing. 
I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm just going to move them up here. And I'm going to use free form. And if that highlight keeps getting in your way, just go to preferences and turn off selection preview. If I go into step by element, there you go. I can come in here and kind of move that over. Turn that off. There we go. Uh, the last step is just kind of all this detail that's up here. If I grab all that, uh, what I can do is just kind of move it to a spot where I kind of think it's looking pretty good. And I could grab this edge. I'm holding the corner and dragging. And so let's go into select my element and then I'm going to hold Alt and deselect those two top pieces I just moved. And you may have to turn off select by element when you do that. But I'm going to hold Alt and drag. Oops, that's not it. Control and drag. And that will scale these in uniformly. And as long as it's just kind of focused on this one sort of detail section here, that'll probably be fine, at least for us to get started. Why don't we go to display only selected? There we go. So you can see we kind of have two groups. And that's because the way the pack UV happens it kind of separates stuff out. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to just region select and grab all these guys. And I'm going to go into planar. And this time I'm going to use best angle. So it kind of does this weird, hey, look, it's grabbing everything. And now in edge, if we turn off, select my element, click the negative space. I'm going to double click this edge here. And I'm going to convert edge selection to seams and go into polygon and just grab all these guys here. And I'm going to hit peel. And it's going to peel those two chunks just like we did with our column previously. I'm going to turn on select by element. I'm just going to rotate this. And I'm going to rotate this part just so that they're flat like this. And do tools, relax, start, relax. There we go. And now I can take these two chunks and I'm just going to kind of move them so they're on top of each other here. There we go. Take those and move them up here to this sort of really detailed portion that I like. And then use freeform to just kind of adjust where they're sitting. And then I may even go further and let's turn off select by element and just grab like this chunk right here and maybe hit break so I can kind of take this chunk and if holding control just kind of drag that down. And then take all of this up here. And let's see, let's think this through. You know what I want to do? I'm going to break this up into some more sections. Oops. I'm going to take grab all this, just drag this up, and then I'm going to grab this row here, which makes this section. I'm going to break it, move it down, then hold control and drag it up. So I have that detail in that one section. And then I'm just going to keep doing that with these kind of generalized sections, placing them and dragging them up. And this section here, I'm actually going to get onto this element. There we go. Kind of like that. All right. So now we have some nice detail elements. Let's turn all that off. Right click, convert that at poly. So if you'd like to get more detail on your column, you can, of course, go into these sections and you can unwrap them in the same way with the trim. But really to finish this off, we need to put on a symmetry and just make sure you turn off Z, but you turn on X and Y, but the Y you'll have to flip. And now you'll see you have it. You do notice you get this little bit of a butterfly effect on here. Uh, I'm going to right click and convert that at poly. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, what I'm going to do is just save this. And you go ahead, get a screenshot, turn this in, and uh, you now have this unwrapped column. I'm going to make a second part to do a little bit of polish work though.